Apple has just released iOS 17.4, which contains a bunch of new features, new emoji, CarPlay enhancements, and tons of changes for the EU. I'm gonna tell you about all of it in this video. Welcome, welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and as I mentioned, Apple has just released iOS 17.4. This update is available right now for you to download on your iPhone. Apple's also released other software updates, including iPad OS 17.4. There's updates for Apple TV, HomePods, Apple Watch, the Mac, the whole gamut is getting an update. And I'm gonna break down all of these new features here in iOS 17.4 that you can start enjoying today. So let's go ahead and walk through all these changes, everything from emoji to CarPlay to stolen device protection. There's a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and dive into it. First things first, I've got my iPhone 15 Pro Max and I've just now updated to iOS 17.4, which as again I said, is available right now to download. Before we get into the fun changes that are gonna make sense for everybody, there's also a very specific set of features that are coming in iOS 17.4 that are only going to be relevant for users in the EU. So I'm just gonna summarize them real quick, and if you wanna learn more about all these features, check out my dedicated video on them. But just to keep it brief here, users in the EU will soon be able to download third-party app marketplaces from the App Store and download apps from other sources besides Apple. They'll also be able to set default browsers besides Safari and third-party browsers will be able to rely on their own web engines besides Apple's WebKit. We're going to see third-party wallet apps and those will also be able to take advantage of the iPhone's NFC chips. These changes are all rolling out now with 17.4, but it's gonna take a little bit before we actually see any of these marketplaces and apps actually show up. So give a little time, but Apple has laid the groundwork here in 17.4. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the new features that are going to apply to everybody. I always find this funny. Everyone loves talking about battery on the iPhone, and we have a change here in 17.4. So we're going into settings, then battery. Apple has broken it down. So there's battery health and then the charging optimization. When we went to battery health, it gives you that normal designator. So basically letting you know how your battery health actually is, not just your capacity and cycle count and all of that. This is exclusive to the iPhone 15 line, so the 15s and the Pros, they're the ones that have like the cycle count here. Now they also have this battery health information, tells you that it's normal. Apple also says they've upgraded the battery capacity. So before it said 80% at 500 cycles was in Apple support documents. And now Apple has reached out and saying they're upgrading this. They're actually making it longer. So it should still be at 80% over a thousand cycles. So I'm at 177 uh, from launch and I'm down to 99% capacity. I don't think that is bad at all, but it gives you that battery health notice right here at the top in plain English what you're actually looking at. Inside of podcasts, Apple has these new features, notably transcripts. These are really cool and you can even search in them. If you're looking for a podcast, might I suggest a HomeKit Insider? I hear it's great. The host is pretty awesome. Yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into a podcast, maybe that HomeKit Insider that I mentioned. So here we are playing an episode of HomeKit Insider and it has automatically pulled up this transcription. There's this little icon in the corner that looks like the lyrics button inside of the music app. But when you tap on that, it pulls up the transcription and then syncs along in real time. So as the hosts are talking, it moves along with that text. And you can search through this, as I said. So if you're looking for a specific part of the podcast, like maybe Roomba there, you can do it. It'll search through and find all those instances. I love this. I think this is super cool. Apple says they are doing this automatically on upload for new podcasts. And it's going to be retroactively added to older episodes as well. Right now at launch, it seems this is going to be available in English. German, French, and Spanish. Hopefully more will be coming in the future. As another small note, the Listen Now button has just been renamed to Home, and the same thing applies in the Music app. It also now just says Home instead of Listen Now in that bottom bar. There's also insights coming to Apple Music too. I love all these new updates. Every time Apple adds new software features, like I get so jazzed about it, and there are still more here in iOS 17.4 that I want to tell you about, and I'm going to in just a minute because I need to talk to you about eSIMs, why this is one of my favorite features that Apple has added to the iPhone, and our sponsor for this video, Olafly. When traveling abroad, there are so many things to worry about between like, is this a safe area to be in? Or is my plane flight gonna be canceled because it's on a 737 Max? It's so much stuff. The only thing you shouldn't have to worry about is the data on your phone. Usually when you travel abroad, there's limited Wi-Fi, data roaming charges are ridiculous, and trying to get a local SIM card can be a pain in the butt with huge lines at the airport. That's why I use an eSIM like Olafly. 
It's so easy to do. You just visit the Olafly website, you choose your destination, including all of these countries in Europe, then choose how long you're gonna be there and how much data you want. You can even opt for a local phone number or unlimited data if that's your thing. Recently, my wife and I traveled to Iceland and an eSIM was an absolute must. I mean, we used it to send photos to everyone back at home. We used it to translate menus and signs and people. And of course, we could use actual maps to navigate to coffee shops or to our next destination. I do not know what I would have done if we didn't have an eSIM on our phone. Next time you travel, check out Olafly. It's simple and reliable with 24-7 customer support, more than 160 destinations worldwide, and affordable plans starting at a dollar, going all the way up to unlimited data for the time of your travel. Thanks again to Olafly for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to talking about those new features coming to your iPhone. Apple's adding new emoji. There are over 100 new emojis added in total. The latest version of Unicode here. Some of my favorites that we're seeing like uh, the Phoenix, the Lime, Shaking Head, Brown Mushroom. There is a shaking or there's a broken chain one. There's just a ton of here that you can access all in iOS 17.4. Apple's digital assistant. So down here in settings, then Siri and search. What used to be like this announce messages with Siri option, this is now just called messages with Siri or messaging with Siri. Now these are all new, but now this new option for read messages. So you can add additional languages here. So that way it can do multiple languages and when it's reading them back, it could read them back in a separate language from what you are sending them in. So this is very cool new option for messaging with Siri, which has also been renamed. In messages, Apple is adding what it calls post-quantum encryption. If you have questions about it, let me know down below in the comments and I can expand on it more. I love CarPlay and we're gonna see one big change to CarPlay here in 17.4, at least in supported vehicles. So for certain vehicles that support the dual screen setup, so there's CarPlay in your instrument cluster and on your dash in those certain vehicles, there's going to be a new instrument cluster view for Apple Maps. So when you're inside of Apple Maps, it's going to be able to show upcoming maneuvers and Apple says you'll be able to swap between the different views with just the click of a button. So it's gonna be a nice little interface option, but unfortunately not available to everybody because I know at least my car doesn't support that dual view. Everything is just contained in the infotainment system. But uh, if you do have a dual car display, this is, sounds like it's gonna be really cool without being the whole next generation version of CarPlay. Speaking of which, Apple is putting more work here into the new version of CarPlay. We're seeing different UI elements show up inside of the code. So some super sleuths uh, have found all these different references, including there's a new goodbye script that'll show on the screen when you power things down. It'll just script across just like Apple's hello that they do on the Mac and Vision Pro and everything. There's also eight new app categories that are showing up. So not for third party apps, but rather for controlling your car. Things like being able to access the car as a camera, the climate, closures, medium, all of this stuff will be available directly through CarPlay. So Apple has introduced all these different icons to go along with them. So again, just for the next version of CarPlay, uh, it's going to be coming out later this year, early this year, in a few supported high-end vehicles, at least at launch. Here on the home screen, we're gonna long hold to edit, had the plus button. We're gonna scroll down to the clock option. There's a new one, so we have clock. We have these uh, other ones we've seen before, but we have this new one called City Digital. So this new version of the clock that you can add to your home screen. Back inside of settings, we've gone to settings, then face ID and passcode. So Apple added the stolen device protection. There's a new option in 17.4 to have it always on. So before it would only trigger when you were away from familiar locations like your home or your work. Now you can have it always be on so it will not automatically uh, turn off until you do it with biometrics. So if you want to be extra careful, you can turn this on. Inside of the wallet application for the Apple cash card, tapping in the icon in the top right hand corner and going down to card number, you can set up a virtual card number, which makes this easier to use, especially when you're trying to use it online. You can actually put in a card number instead of just having to use Apple Pay. So more way to use those funds without having to transfer them to a bank account. In the Apple TV app, if you're going to watch something, how to watch, these are no longer like the cards they were for, and now they're listed as a more of a list. So this is just a little bit easier so you know how to jump into different apps to play anything from the TV app. 
I've gone here into the app store and I've gone to my account. And when I go to purchase history, I can now actually see all of my purchases, including things that aren't just apps. So if there's been any music or any movies, anything like that, that I have also purchased, those can show here. You can search all that stuff as before, but basically now this is showing everything purchased with your Apple ID from one spot inside of the app store. Since we're talking about the App Store, Apple did make a new change here. So Apple will now be allowing game library apps. So these are ones like GeForce Now from NVIDIA, the Xbox Cloud Gaming app. Those before had to be running in the web browser before you could play them. Now they can actually be part of the App Store and have a whole catalog of games that you can stream or play from your phone. We're also seeing some leaked references to some upcoming Apple products here in 17.4. There have been more references to unannounced iPads and reference to an unannounced new Apple Pencil that can even include Find My Support. There's a lot to talk about with this stuff and I'm gonna have to save that for another video. So make sure you stay subscribed here to Apple Insider. But that's about it. That is what is covered in iOS 17.4, a bunch of new features that you guys can all enjoy. Let me know down below in the comments what your favorite new feature of iOS 17.4, whether it's the EU changes, whether it's the emoji, whether it is something else. Let me know in the comments over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU, over on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941. By the way, if you love this merch, this is designed in a exclusive collaboration with Basic Apple Guy. I absolutely love this tee and I get so many compliments on it. If you wanna pick one up for yourself, it is linked down below this video. There's all these different options, colors, styles of this shirt. So go ahead and pick one up if you're interested. Otherwise, stay tuned. Got a lot more videos coming your way.